Okay, guys, great to see everybody. Um, you know, what we'd like to do, kind of like typically what we do, just do a little bit of a recap. I know I made some comments after the game. Sometimes uh, those are not as in-depth. Uh, sometimes uh, maybe, um, you know, I can get a little bit pointed. So hopefully you guys can understand that. <clears throat> but I would like to go through some things uh, today as far as having a chance to really dive in and, and look at the game tape. We knew uh, <clears throat> our game against Air Force was going to come down to a one-possession game. It was not a one-possession game. Uh, it, it could have been, but could have, should have. Uh, but nonetheless, I think it was a tight ball game. What was going to be important for us to do was flip the script on them. Uh, they do a great job as far as uh, time of possession, uh, staying on the field, and we needed to do that. Uh, unfortunately, our first four drives, we went three and out. There's a lot of different reasons for that. Uh, we certainly need to improve on that. Uh, but I thought that had a big, big impact. We started out a little slow on defense, uh, which typically happens. You try to replicate everything you can uh, against uh, Air Force, and it's always difficult to do. Um, they they moved the ball and, and controlled the, the clock and uh, you know the time of possession pretty significantly. A um, <clears throat> couple things about Air Force, so I mean, they went into the game, uh, I think they were number one in the country in rushing, averaging 6.5 yards per carry. I think we ended up hold, holding them to 3.3 yards per carry. I know we bled a little bit, but I thought during the ebb and flow of the game, things began to change and we began to maintain the line of scrimmage. Uh, they did put the ball on the ground five times. Uh, we were able to get one fumble, and so that had an impact in the ball game. We needed to come up with some fumbles. Uh, we came up with one, but when that ball was on the ground, we needed to do a better job with that. As I said earlier, the four three and outs at the beginning part of the game had an impact, but uh, the resolve of our football team to hang in there and fight <clears throat> uh, has been apparent all year long, and that was the case uh, here. You know, we came back with a, a long run by X and, and got a, a touchdown there and then executed a great two-minute drive. I thought the momentum had switched. Uh, we came out in that second half. I had the football. Uh, we were moving the ball fairly well, and we stubbed our toe. I think we had a penalty on that one. Um, some of the things that we did not do uh, during the course of the game, we were 0 for 3 on 50-50 balls. Uh, those have been you know, some things that we've done uh, well. And so uh, we were not, not able to do that. Um, you know, I, I do want to address this, too. Some people have maybe made some comments about how I feel about John Hoyland uh, with our field goal kicker. So I'm going to address some things here. First of all, I have a great deal of confidence in John. Uh, and uh, I don't think anybody has questioned uh, his ability. Maybe uh, some people have questioned some of my decisions as far as when to go for a field goal, when to do sets and such. So uh, I'd be more than happy to address some things. I don't think it's going to uh, serve us all well to go through a big uh, you know, a debate as far as some of the decisions. But believe me, uh, the decision to, to throw the ball on fourth down as opposed to the field goal during that time had nothing to do with my confidence in him. Actually, it was just quite uh, the opposite. I knew coming into this situation, uh, we were going to have to throw the ball in the end zone, score a touchdown. It felt like having the ball on the 25-yard line. Uh, we've gotten behind their defenders a couple times during that time. Um, at that time, you know, Sean had made some plays in the scramble, but we were protecting the ball pretty well. I saw one of their corners go down earlier. He got back inserted in the game, but we, we felt uh, like we could get the ball in the end zone, and I felt much more comfortable uh, going for a long field goal to tie the game as opposed to trying to kick a field goal and then flip the script and then try to throw the ball. It was going to be difficult uh, for us to get the ball in the end zone. The other thing that put it in context, I also I know Troy really well. I knew they had the number one rushing team in the country. I looked at uh, the percentages. Uh, while typically being a defensive coach, I would have said kick the field goal, but putting this all in the context of the ball game, uh, that was my decision. It turned out to be uh, wrong. I mean, they pressured us on fourth down. Kudos to them. They came up with a sack. But believe me, it had nothing to do with John. Uh, also, there was maybe another time or two we could have kicked a field goal. As you saw during the course of the game, while we don't do analytics, I've studied that book, I, and I know Air Force does, 
and you saw them uh, go for it on fourth down several times, fourth and one. They're, I don't know what their percentage is off the chart, but that field position has an impact on when they decide to go for it on fourth and down. <clears throat> and so some of our thoughts were to try to pin them with a punt um, and, uh, and then get them out of the situation where they're going to go for it on fourth down. So you can second guess me all I want, all you want, uh, and I'm comfortable with that. But please make uh, note that, uh, you know, I'm going to, I feel really good about John uh, and great confidence in him. And so uh, we could have a debate on that. We could probably sit at the, the coffee shop and talk for three hours, but that was the thought process there. I do think it's important to flip the script and move on to Fresno State. Uh, you know, they're an excellent football team. Uh, we talked to some people at Oregon, and Oregon's got an excellent team, and they uh, they felt like uh, it was not a fluke. Maybe Oregon could have scored another touchdown, but they matched up really well. Um, Jake Hayner is just an outstanding quarterback. He's completing 70% of his balls, 370-some uh, yards in, in the passing game. They can run the ball. The Rivers, number 20, uh, is averaging 70 yards per game. They don't run it quite as much as maybe some other people, but if you, if you just lay back and, and, and play coverage, you know, they can get the, the, the ball uh, moving on the ground. They've got a stable of receivers that go up and get the ball really well. Uh, I do want to make note, too, uh, Kalen DeBoer is a new head coach out there. Uh, Kalen is a guy that <clears throat> I've known for many years. Uh, we've competed against one another at different schools. Uh, many of their staff members kind of have uh, a Midwest flavor, which fits well with Fresno. A lot of times people... Uh, don't understand the big, big ag area. I think it, Kalen's a great, great hire there. Obviously, he's done a super job with that program. And so uh, it'll be a, a, a really, really uh, exciting ball game. We're excited it's going to be at one thirty in the afternoon at War Memorial Stadium. Uh, we may have a little inclement weather in the middle of the week, but I think the Lord's looking down. We're going to have sunshine. So if you have not got your tickets yet, uh, please uh, pick up the phone. I think uh, it's going to be a great, great atmosphere. Concerning their defense, I know I've talked about Fresno's offense uh, significantly. You know, that they're big and strong up front. Their two inside guys are over 300 pounds. They've got some really good edge rushers, and their back seven runs really well. So, <clears throat> you know, uh, we're in the Mountain West. And like I said earlier, the price of poker goes up. Uh, the margins for victory um, are also slimmer. And uh, our, our players are excited. Uh, we're going to bounce back and, and have an excellent practice today. So at this time, I'll open up any questions anybody may have concerning last game or flipping the script going into Fresno. So fire away. Josh Miller. Um, you know, I think you saw part of that uh, as the game went along. He started out, uh, some of his reads were, were not the best. Uh, some of his balls that he threw uh, were a little bit inaccurate. And our receivers, you know, put their hands on the ball, but he, he made it more difficult than what it should have been to be able to, to get into some rhythmic throws, which we were striving to do. And so we've got to shake off the cobwebs there. He, he does have a really good throwing motion. He is confident. I think Air Force, um, I don't want to say threw, threw us for some, some curve balls there earlier in the ball game, but we've got to get Sean calmed down a little bit better. He knows it. Uh, and then also, along with that, you know, a couple of those plays early in the game, uh, we're, we're going to need to come up with a couple of those plays. The ball's not always going to be thrown on the right shoulder pad. Uh, but we cannot become one-dimensional and just say we're going to run the football. And so uh, we're going to work hard this week cleaning up some things. There's some things fundamentally that he needs to do better, and there's some things our, our receivers need to do a little bit better as well. So um, we're anticipating a great week. I know Sean is a self-starter. Um, he doesn't get real high, doesn't get real low. I thought he improved as the game went along, and I thought some of the things that he did – uh, with some of his plays were really outstanding. I mean, he improvised, he ran, he scrambled, he he made some plays out of nothing. But the things we need to work on is making the plays out of something. Brian, Brian. Hey, guys, I heard you used to have a quarterback in Firebach who throws some good picks in the NFL. <laughs> now you have another one from the Valley. Yep. Just, what did you see in Sean? <clears throat> 
Well, we remember uh, seeing Sean at the USC camp, and, um, you know, we made an offer there, and I promised his family that I'd come out and watch him play. A lot of times people will raise their eyebrows and go, how in the world can you do that from Wyoming? Uh, we, we were talking to him during the course of the year. Uh, I know that he, he garnered some interest from Fresno. Uh, Fresno, and I talked to Kalen about this. Fresno is committed to another quarterback. Uh, we got back in it on Sean. Uh, when I went out to uh, Kerman, uh, what I saw was, you know, a, uh, a small town uh, ag community that was almost a carbon copy of Fireball. Uh, I think that there were some common themes between uh, Sean and and Josh. I, you know, either one of the dads had coached one of them in midget football. Uh, but I also saw an unbelievable competitive guy. Sean was out there uh, trying to block a punt and dove and landed on his head. And I thought, okay, here's a quarterback that's a catcher on the baseball team. Uh, we can clean up his fundamentals, but that DNA as far as him being competitive, it's there. And, um, you know, it was a neat, neat uh, uh, evening that I spent at the ball uh, – ball game uh, they have some of the best tacos in the world there and I was able to get back home and then uh, we were able to close the deal and get him and uh, and those two guys uh, you know there's a lot of similarities I know that people are saying what well, about completion percentages and this and this I was here with Josh and we lived some of the great things with Josh and we lived some of the things uh, you know I heard him throw the ball out of bounds and you got a, I don't know, some type of penalty on it. That's Josh. Uh, so uh, I think Sean's on a great trajectory. It's great to have him, and it's great to be recruiting the Central Valley. I got the Michigan State hat on there, huh? Are you a front runner? They're winning? Okay. Exactly. I'm curious, Greg. I know you give your staff and your players 24 hours. Right. Well, I can tell you this. Uh, <clears throat> I went home and I slept like a baby. I woke up and I uh, cried every 15 minutes. Um, it was hard, you know, because you replay every play that you go through in a game like this as a coach. I think sometimes as coaches and players, we see some things differently. Um, I did talk to our players about having 24 hours. Co you know, we didn't have 24 hours as a coaching staff. We were in the next morning and you know, uh, putting the last game behind and starting to work on Fresno. One of the things that does help you is once you watch the tape, many times, uh, you know, the reflection of the tape, you start to see maybe it wasn't as bad as what we thought. On the flip side, there's times that you think everything's great and you see some uh, glaring errors. So there was some good things that we did. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it sparked me up, it sparked our staff. However, you know, we've taken a critical look, saying, okay, where we're at, uh, we're four and one, five games into the season. We know what kind of team we have, what kind of things we got to do to tweak it. But then once you start working on Fresno, that's one of the best things to do. And it's really going to be, uh, you know, enjoyable for me to get out there on the field tonight. I think we have good character on this football team, not think. I know we have good character, and I know they're going to turn the page. So that's what we do. But uh, my assessment of sleeping like a baby was about right. I mean, it was a hard night. Tracy, on the subject of uh, the quarterback for Buffalo, <laughs> why, would you, why did you have interest when nobody else in the country did? I mean, what got you mm -hmm. thinking that he could play for you when he had no other even responses from coaches? No, you know, and, and – uh, I will frame this, you know, I've talked to, to Kalen out there and, and to Sean about Fresno. Certainly that's in the backyard for those guys. But I'm going to tell you what, Josh Allen would have given his left leg to go to Fresno, and they, they took a guy who was six foot. And um, I, I want to credit Brent Vegan a lot. I know he's no longer on our staff. He's doing a great job in Montana State. But uh, Brent had done a good job evaluating. We were looking at different guys in the area. But what, here's what we saw. We saw – Tracy, we saw a multi-sport player. We did not see the guy that has the dad that takes him around to every spit and polish uh, quarterback camp and, you know, is a four- or five-star recruit and goes out there and he wears spandex and he looks real good throwing on seven-on-seven. Seven. We saw a competitive guy. We saw a guy 
that, uh, you know, he's a pitcher in baseball and, uh, you know, would come out on the theme of a ring of fire when they'd run out there on fireball. We saw a competitive guy who was a multi-sport player. And we saw this arm, uh, but he was really raw. And uh, we have had really good luck uh, going through. And I'm not, I'll, I'll name some names here, whether, I even though Carson is up now. Carson Wentz was a multi-sport player. Easton Stick did some great things. He's still with the Chargers. We had Josh Allen. Um, that's kind of been our MO. And we're not interested in the guy who has been to every quarterback camp and Elite 11 and only plays quarterback. And if, if he can't do really well, he's going to transfer. We're looking for a team guy. And so that was Josh Allen. It's been heartwarming for me. I don't know how you see it, Tracy. I know you're a baseball guy, but I believe playing quarterback in the NFL is the hardest thing in all sports. And to see him take his physical skills and hone that up to understanding how to play quarterback, uh, it's been great. And I know this, he rides for the brand. Uh, his parents come back to the first game. He loves the University of Wyoming, and he'll never forget his time here. Ryan, mm -hmm. no, go ahead, Tracy, jump on it again. Hey, have you been, I mean, what about how quickly he's adapted and improved at the NFL level, too? I mean, it's, the game he had last night was pretty amazing. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I didn't watch all of it. Uh, we were grinding away here. I saw bits and pieces of it. Um, here, here was my thoughts, and I spent a great deal of time with their head coach uh, and said, you know what, uh, <clears throat> he's immature, and that's not a knock. I mean, when they took him, I don't think he shaves. Now he's got a beard. Uh, but I said, he's really skilled, but you're going to have a hard time with him when he's younger. He has been ahead of the uh, curve. I think Brian's done a great job. I spent some time with the offensive coordinator. We had dinner together. Uh, Brian's done a great job uh, mentoring him. And you're seeing a complete quarterback, but what you're not, what you what you will ne never see, is him uh, shy away from being competitive. I think on that first drive, there were three runs that he did. A lot of NFL guys won't do that. He'll sell his heart and soul out for the team, and people will love to follow him. And um, so that it factor, that it factor has always been there. His being able to throw the ball on a rope. Uh, has always been there. What has not been there is his understanding how to play quarterback. And we're in hopes that Sean's going to take that same trajectory to, okay, he's got the competitiveness, he's got a strong arm, uh, he's got to learn how to play quarterback better. Thank you very much. You bet, Tracy. Ryan. Ryan. Uh, Craig, I'll squeeze in a two-parter about the defensive line. And from the un untrained eye, it seems like uh, How is he playing right now? And also, um, obviously, it's going to be critical to get some pressure on him. Yeah. Speak about the importance of your D line. Right. Um, I would disagree with you when you say you have an untrained eye. I think you have a trained eye. Um, <clears throat> you know, we went into that game being really, really concerned about um, being knocked off the football. And what occurred during the course of the game, you saw a transition uh, in the second quarter to where the line of scrimmage began to be solidified and us coming up with some tackles at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Burton Oli did a great job. It's important for us to have several players in there. Uh, but what began to occur, Ryan, is uh, between him and Cole Goodbow, those two guys in this game, uh, solidified that front, that along with Chad Muma. And all of a sudden, you saw Troy start punting. And that's – Troy and I know each other uh, really well. And there was a reason why the things began to change. And I was concerned at half, Ryan. Uh, I told our defensive staff, I said, watch out, they're going to throw. And they kind of looked at me like, are you crazy? They hadn't been thrown at all. Well, they did. And, uh, you know, we got to learn from that. But what we did gain was uh, real confidence that we're pretty deep at the defensive line. Spinning that into this next week and putting it in context of Fresno, they can run the football, but it's an entirely different style of run. We need to get press, pressure uh, on Hayner, and we need to get him moving around. And that, So that's going to mean you know, we'll bring a backer occasionally, we'll blitz some, but we got to do it with four men. And so those, those guys up front, not only the ins, inside guys, but the flank guys have got to get some pressure. 
Uh, for us, uh, you know, Hawaii was successful. They threw five, uh, Fresno threw five picks. And a lot of it was they were throwing the ball under duress. So we need to do that. And I do think that uh, you've got a trained eye. I do want you guys to know this. I read everything you guys write. Ryan, I read what you wrote, and I hope I address that here. And I didn't chop your head off in the press conference like I did one of our other uh, colleagues on the call. Josh, come on. <laughs> okay, is Cody up next or Josh up next? Josh Miller. Hey, Coach, um, you know, uh, obviously Jake Hayner is a really talented guy back there at Fresno State, uh, but with his role as a secondary at some spring, has been almost a little bit of a welcome pick to see it more normal back in the back half. Yeah, the, the corners that uh, played against uh, – uh, Air Force were, were tasked with a completely different task. I mean, I don't know if they – maybe they got attacked one time. Uh, you know, Air Force at attacked our safeties, what they attacked, and so our, our corners were more uh, tacklers. Uh, it'll be a challenge this week. Uh, Hayner throws great balls. He's able to throw the ball in all kinds of different places from the hash over the sticks. He can throw back shoulder fades. I know that <clears> – <throat> Both CJ and ZZ uh, are competitive guys. Uh, they're going to take the challenge as well, all our secondary guys. So uh, we're going to have to readjust. I mean, it's no longer, you know, who's got the dive, who's got the quarterback, and who's got the pitch and the pin dive and all these things. Now it's going to be wide open football, and uh, so and, and they do it really well. And I, I, I'm encouraged because I, I, I really have great confidence in our secondary that they'll play well, but. I think, uh, as Ryan brought up, we got to get some pressure on them with the guys up front. Cody, you're up next. So, Craig, you said you talked to Penn State's coaches before the ball was taken in and then talked to Oregon. Is this something new that you guys are doing? Or are you, doing um, you know what, if we, know some, if we know some guys on the staff, you know, there's a pretty tight-knit circle around in college football. And, uh, you know, if we know some guys who are on the other staff, we just don't make blind calls. But if there's some colleagues out there that we know and trust and be a guy that you go out and have a beer with, uh, we've lobbed some calls in and people have lobbed calls into us, and that's part of the nature of college football. And also, I think it's reflective of we've got a pretty broad-based staff with uh, a lot of guys that have a lot of years' experience. By the way, Scotty Hazleton is the defensive coordinator at Michigan State. I knew that. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, you know what? I, th I, I think there's, there's at times when we've gotten into our, our traditional runs, uh, you've seen us be able to, to knock guys off the football and uh, control the line of scrimmage. And we were able to do that some in the Air Force game. You know, when you saw uh, a defensive tackle, we say a three technique, uh, getting doubled and knocked back four yards. That's those are things that we can we can uh, uh, build on. I think uh, some some of the things that we were disappointed in. There's been other times that we have not gotten man on man and we we've, we've missed some assignments. You can have you know a four guys do something right and a, f a fifth guy uh, come off and not do something right. Then the play's not going to go anywhere. We need five guys this week. I think we need to protect the passer better. Air Force did a better job. We need to protect better and make sure that, uh, jo you know, not Josh, but Sean is able to, to stay in the pocket and not just have happy feet and move around. So that's something we'll have to work on this week. You guys got any more questions? Okay, gentlemen, thank you. It's going to be a heck of a ball game. We're excited about being uh, at War Memorial Stadium. Um, Fresno's an excellent team, and I think we have the makings to be an excellent team. Appreciate it, guys. Bye now.